Good morning friends I am Dr Vijay Prakash and today we will be discussing about direct retainers now this is part 1 of the video and in this part total uh, videos i'll be taking in six parts five parts sorry this first part we will be describing about the direct retainers the class assembly their requirements and principles of class designs in the second part we will be talking about the circumferential or acres class and their types third video we will be putting it on the roch class or the bar class fourth video will be on the rpi versus the rpa concept and the fifth video that is the last video of this the fifth video will be on the intracoronal retainers now today we will be talking about the first part of this series that is on direct retainers direct retainers by definition are those components of cast partial dentures which are used to retain and prevent dislodgement which consist of the class assembly or the precision attachments now another term which is important is direct retention direct retention is defined as the retention obtained in rpd or removable partial dentures by the use of class or attachments which resist removal from the abutment teeth now direct retainers are of two types their basic classification is they are of two types one is the intracoronal retainers another one are the extracoronal retainers the first four parts uh, which will be uh, talked about on direct retainers will be confined to extracoronal retainers and the fifth part of the video will be dedicated to intracoronal retainers so extracoronal direct retainers is defined as a part of cast partial dentures or removable partial dentures which acts as a direct retainer and or stabilize as a stabilizer for denture by partially encircling or contacting an abutment tooth now whenever we talk about extra coronal retainers the first thing which we need to talk about is the clasp assembly before talking about the clasp assembly we need to understand certain terms like what is height of contour now height of contour is basically the greatest bulge or diameter of a tooth or a crown okay now what does i mean by that if you uh, see the molars or the premolars then you can notice that the central part of the tooth has the greatest bulge okay in when we see it or when we measure it in a specific direction like for example i'll show you here if i survey this model then i find that at one particular point or one particular area there its greatest uh, diameter of the tooth and this is say here if you see the line here this is that this is known as the height of contour because above that the tooth tapers and below that also the tooth tapers if you can see it nicely okay in 1916 uh, prothero gave the cone theory now according to this theory the shape of the premolars or the molars are in the form of cones now you have the apexes of cones the base of which meet in the center let me show you so according to the cone theory you have two cones one cone they taper like this and another cone tapers like this and the base you have the common base which is in the center so the shape of premolars and molars are in this form that was given by prothero 
in 1916 another uh, doctor gave told about height of contour so according to devans 1955 those areas which are above the greatest diameter are called as the supra bulge area and those areas which are below the height of contour are called as the infra bulge areas so these are two ways in which we explain the height of contours height of contour can change with the change of the tilt of the cast that we had discussed when we talked about surveying in the surveying uh, discussion we had already talked about the the undercuts and the height of contours now what is an undercut undercut is basically any area which is below height of contour if you see this if you see this any area which is below the height of contour forms an undercut same thing will happen here that is an undercut if any component of the cast partial dentures goes below the undercut it will resist the vertical dislodging forces any forces which tends to dislodge the forces this undercut or that component is going to resist that now another term is the guide plane guide planes are given in the undercut that is the relative parallelism between the two teeth and this also should be parallel and should be in the same path should follow the same path as determined path of insertion and removal now the clasp assembly clasp assembly is defined as the part of removable dental processes that acts as a direct retainer and or stabilizer for the processes by partially encompassing or contacting the abutment tooth components of clasp assembly includes the clasp the reciprocal clasp the cingulum incisal or the occlusal rest that is one type of that rest and the minor connector now if we see this this is the clasp assembly this is the rest this is the retention arm this is the reciprocal arm and connection between this this is the minor connector if you take from here this will be the minor connector if we see in this figure this is the rest it could be an occlusal rest incisal rest or the cingulum rest this junction is the body this is the minor connector this is the shoulder part of the retention arm and the tip of this is an retentive terminal this opposing arm is the reciprocal arm so these are all the parts of the clasp assembly retention arm retention arm is one of the component of the clasp assembly and it is a flexible segment of a removable partial denture which engages the undercut on an abutment and which is designed to retain the denture now if you see this denture this is the this is the retention arm and retention arm is divided into two the tip of this is a retentive terminal this clasp consists of the retentive clasp arm as i just mentioned and the retentive terminal now retentive clasp arm if you see this part this is not flexible this is not flexible and it should be located above the height of contour this part but only the retentive terminal should locate below the height of contour and it should be flexible some kind of flexibility show, should be there so that it engages into the undercut and this resists the dis vertical dislodging forces another component of the clasp assembly is the reciprocal arm that is the opposing reciprocal arm is always opposite to that of the retention arm it is a clasp arm or extension which is used in a removable partial dentures to oppose the action of some or the other parts of the processes basically it, it should be always opposite to that of the retentive arm 
it resists the lateral forces exerted by the retention arm any lateral forces which are because of this retention arm this component basically counterbalance that and it should always lie above the height of contour see here retentive terminal was below the height of contour but the reciprocal arm should always lie the entire reciprocal arm should always lie above the height of contour it should be rigid there should there should be no flexibility in this component of the clasp assembly it should provide stability and reciprocation the denture should be stabilized by this against the horizontal movement any horizontal movement because of this is balanced or uh, resisted stabilized by this reciprocal arm it acts as a indirect retainer that is it prevents rocking of the denture next component is the shoulder shoulder connects the body to the clasp terminals in both the sides you have it connects the body to the clasp terminal so it should lie above the height of contour and should should provide stabilization against horizontal displacement the other part of the clasp assembly is the rest rest is a rigid extension of the removable partial dentures which contacts the remaining tooth or teeth to dissipate the vertical or the horizontal forces that is it resists the tissue ward movement it provides the vertical support to the processes it will resist the tissue ward movement of the denture this will hold this will act as a vertical stop in order to resist the tissue ward movement of the denture another component is the minor connector which is connecting the Uh, class assembly to the major connector this is the connecting link between the major connector or the base of the removable partial dentures and the other units of the processes there are in all eight principles of class design the first principle is the class design should encircle that is it should make around 180 degrees of continuous contact if we are talking about a circumferential class then it should encircle around 180 degrees if you see the tooth is here the apartment tooth and this clasp design is encircling that and if we talk about the bar clasp or the roche clasp then minimum of three point contact should be there if you see this this is the bar clasp of the roche clasp and there should be around three point contact the other uh, principle designs are that the occlusal rest should be designed in such a way that it it should prevent tissue ward movement of the denture we just explained that each retentive terminal should be opposed by a reciprocal component very important whenever you have a re retention arm there should always be a reciprocal arm balanced retention should be present that is if if there is a retention arm present on the buccal side then the reciprocal arm should be there on the lingual side or vice versa like if retention arm is present on the lingual side then reciprocal arm should be present on the uh, on the buccal side only a minimum necessary amount of retention should be used you should not engage the uh, retentive terminal too much into the undercut because then unnecessary horizontal forces will be applied on the abutment tooth primary abutment class of the distal extension denture base should never exert tipping forces on the abutment now that is the reason the the abut primary abutment class especially in the case of uh, especially in the case of distal extension cases it should not exert too much of pressure on the abutment tooth it is always preferable to place the reciprocal elements at the height of contour or above the height of contour not never below and the retention uh, retentive elements or the retentive terminal should always be below the height of contour another uh, principle is path of escapement should never coincide with the path of removal so these are all the principles of the clasp designs now functional requirements of a clasp the functional requirement of the clasp there are six of them the first one is retention second is stability support reciprocation encirclement and passivity so we take the first one that is retention 
Now, what is retention? Retention is that quality of a processes which is inherent quality of the processes which resist the force of gravity, the adhesiveness of the foods, and the forces associated with opening of the jaws. That is the vertical dislodging forces. Any any part of the class assembly which resists the vertical dislodging forces is known as retention. Retention is the most important function of the class because if retention is not there, then this class assembly is useless. I mentioned to you that the retentive terminal should engage into the retentive undercut. So the retentive undercut is also called as the preferred undercut. And how do we get the undercut on a particular tilt of that cast or the or the yeah cast? We specify how much of undercut is needed and how what is the favorable undercut for retention of that processor. There are several factors of retention. The factors of affecting retention of the class are depth of the undercut. That is how much is the depth of the undercut? Taper of the class palm. Second, third is the cross-sectional form of the class, and another one is the approach of the class form. Now, the depth of the undercut. More the deeper the undercut, the greater will be the retention. But as I told you, if there, there sh you should not engage the retentive terminal in a deep undercut because it will apply that much of horizontal forces on the abutment tooth. So there are three. Uh, dimensions for a retentive undercut which is like the buccolingual weight the distance between the survey line and the tip of the clasp arm and the mesodistal depth retentive undercut also depends on what type of material we are using so if you are using a cast chrome alloy then 0 0.01 inches of retentive undercut is more is is enough and if we are using a cast gold alloy then 0 0.015 inches of undercut is needed. Another rot alloy is 0 0.020 inches of undercut is needed because rot alloy is more flexible. So greater flexibility that means lower the modulus of elasticity, deeper into the undercut that alloy can go. Now the class form should always taper from the origin to the tip you can see this it is more thick at the original and as it comes to the tip it tapers so this it should always be like that the dimension at the tip should be half of that of origin this should be half of that of the origin this is required another factor is the length greater the length there is increased flexibility shorter the length less flexibility will be there another factor is the cross sectional form now if you see this is a round rod clasp this has the ability to flex in all the directions so it can go into a deeper undercut as i just uh, told you when i was ta talking about different alloys there we have talked about uh, rot alloys where it requires a 0 0.020 inches of undercuts Another type is the half round clasp. Now half round clasp can only flex in a single direction. And that is the reason wherever you have more uh, undercut then rot alloys are uh, needed and else half round cast clasp can be uh, used. Like in a cast chrome alloy uh, half round cast clasps are uh, used and if you are using if you want more uh, flexibility than rot alloys class is used now fabrication with a rot alloy is difficult and that is the reason half round shaped uh, class are used more often another factor is the approach of the class palm now gingivally approaching class palm has a better retention as this pushes against the undercut if you see this, this applies a pushing type of force. As against the circumferentially approaching clasp, they, avoid, uh, they apply a pull type of force. So this is always a better. Another requirement is uh, for clasp assembly is stability. Stability is defined as the 
quality of attention to be firm steady or constant to resist displacement by functional stresses and not to be subjected to change of position when forces are applied so all the components of the clasp except the retention arm should provide stability only the retentive terminal of the retention arm provides retention rest all the component of the class assembly provides stability so here if we see the cast circumferential clasp offer a greater stability because it has a rigid shoulder and rod clasp have a flexible shoulder and bar clasp do not have a shoulder hence they offer less stability so if we compare about stability then gingivally approaching clasp provide less stability in comparison to circumferentially or occlusally approaching clasp another functional requirement of clasp assembly is support now as we know that the occlusal rest which you see here provides the vertical support that is tissue word movement it resists the tissue word movement of the of the processes next factor is next requirement for a clasp assembly is reciprocation we have already talked about reciprocation that there should always be a reciprocal arm there should always be an opposing clasp to resist the lateral forces from the retention clasp so retain reciprocal arm should always be there to resist the lateral forces from this retention arm another functional requirement is encirclement we already have talked about that that it is a property of clasp assembly to encompass more than 180 degree of the abutment tooth either by continuous or broken contact if we talk about occlusal approaching clasp then it is a continuous 180 degree encirclement if we talk about the gingivally approaching clasp then it is the broken uh, contact which prevents dislodgement during function next functional requirement is passivity that means all the components of the clasp assembly should rest passive there should not be active force on the abutment tooth back because that will be an unnecessary force on the abutment tooth so passivity is defined as the quality or condition of inactivity or rest assumed by the teeth tissues and dentures when a removable partial denture is in place but not under masticatory pressure so retentive function should act only when dislodging forces are present and if clasp is not seated properly retentive forces act continuously on the tooth leading to pain and tenderness because if it is not going to fit passively then unnecessary force will be there on the abutment tooth and which can result in pain and tenderness of the uh, uh, of uh, on the abutment tooth and patient may complain of pain even while wearing the denture the patient may complain of pain so the the clasp assembly should always have a passive fit so this is all about the clasp assembly thank you for watching the video